Okay, so I'm going to talk about a names backbone or a graph of taxonomy. And uh, I'll do a little bit about where that project fits within, within Q. So I work in the biodiversity informatics team at Q. We've been lucky enough to get UK government funding, so DEFRA funding, to look at the science and horticultural systems that we run at Q. And we split the work really into three phases. So firstly, nomenclature and taxonomy. That's the area that I work upon. And that's what I'm going to talk about today. When we sorted out the names, we're going to work on collections. We're going to switch focus to that next year. That doesn't mean we'll have done all the names by next year. Um, and when we've done those two, we're going to work on taxon-based information, the assertion that a species has a particular characteristic. Both collections and taxon-based information need to, need to use names, so it really makes sense that we do that first. And we're not doing this really just as an IT project. It's, uh, it's really about us being able to analyze the data that we hold in a, in a more semantic way and for us to be able to synthesize new data by bringing it together. And I've, I've kind of summarized that aim as the, as the desire to create, curate, and cite semantically meaningful objects. So that's a really noble aim, and it's completely non-unique. Um, Google last year announced that they were working towards building a knowledge graph. So when they crawl around the web and index data, they don't want to process it just as text. They want to make semantically meaningful objects out of it. And they had this really nice tagline, which I stole. And they said they want to operate with things, not strings. So we can show that as a three-layer model. So at the very lowest level, we've got lexical entities or strings. And that's any attempt at us transcribing an entity. And we can all spell things wrong, and we all do. And they, those, those strings are full of mistakes. So we've got many of them. And they're, and they're not really very useful things for us to work with. At the next layer up, we've got recognizable entities, so, so a layer of things. And once we recognize those, then we can assert relationships between them, and we can build a graph of things. And that maps really well to what we do in nomenclature and taxonomy. So we've got attempts at transcribing names. And names are difficult to spell right, and people can spell them wrong in an awful lot of ways, and I've seen lots of them. To the extent that I kind of call this layer nomenclature, it's a, it's a whole load of mess that we see in all kinds of data. So it's the informal attempt at transcribing names. We can map those up into names in the nomenclatural sense. And that's the objective facts about a name. So these are code-governed names. And the objective facts are things like the orthography, the authorship, the place of publication, so the protolog reference, perhaps a type citation, and objective synonymy that we have under our codes. And we find those kind of data in the nomenclature that we have. So, so IPNI, which grew from the project that, that Charles Darwin set up for the vascular plants, and also for mycology. Q has interest in mycology. We have a, a similar nomenclature called Index Fungorum. When we recognize those names, then we can get up to the level of taxonomic concepts so we can assert relationships between those names so, so that we can recognize certain species. And we hold these things, taxon concepts, in projects like the World Checklist. So that's a project run out of Q, and that's, that's a global monographic project. But we also get collections of concepts in, with, with different scopes. So we may have checklists that are regionally scoped, things that we find in floras. And we talked a lot today about the kind of questions that we're asked as biodiversity scientists. And the questions that, that people ask us, they tend to be at this level. You want to really recognize species and then talk about how species interrelate or where species are found. So we want to operate at the level of a graph of things. And being a self-confessed geek, I think a graph of things sounds really cool, and I'd much rather work there. But the problem is most of the data that we have really is at this bottom layer. It's at the level of strings. And that's like this, except the snakes are winning, probably. And on a bad day, it feels a lot like this. So what we need to do is provide systems and tools that allow people to better navigate between those layers. So we've got lots of uh, patchy attempts at transcribing names, and we need to be able to translate those into meaningful names and then up into the graph of things. Now, I've, I've talked a lot about graphs. Um, in, in working to this model, in actually implementing it, the top two layers we've actually done with graph technology. Um, a few years ago, Graph technology was something that really existed only in computer science labs. It was, a, it was an area of research. 
but it's really coming to the mainstream because many, many commercial applications want to use social networking features and they've really recognized the fact that the relationships between entities are at least as interesting as the entities themselves. So it's, it's, been, a, it's been a pretty simple thing for us to, to use in a, in a practical way. The lowest level, the level of strings, we've been doing that with a, an awful lot of batch processes and a big database of mappings and decisions that are made on those mappings and dedicated staff. So we've got a team of four who are pushing all our legacy data through that layer of strings and then mapping them up into, into meaningful names. So I said earlier that I thought this wasn't really an IT project. And I, I was pretty sure of that at the outset, and I'm absolutely convinced of it now. Uh, populating that center layer, the layer of facts, is really key. That, that layer that I've highlighted there in red, the, the layer of names. And populating that and keeping it meaningfully populated means changing our processes, certainly the, the processes that we operate on in Q. And Q is a big, diverse organization, so our processes also are relevant el elsewhere. Um, other, other people can use our kind of workflows. So we need to collaboratively build an authoritative set of names, and then we can make those available so that we can, we can build a graph of concepts. So we have a quick look behind at what it looks like when we represent nomenclature and taxonomic data as a graph. Then we've got a clean separation here between the nomenclature data, which is sitting in those two nodes, and the relationship between it, which relationship between those two nodes which makes that set of data a concept. And we put all the conceptual data on the, on the relationship. And that makes the nodes very, very clean. And we can, we can easily query for the data that's on, on the relationship as well as the data that's sitting in the nodes. And this is quite a contrived example, but it, it shows that we can have multiple opinions, so multiple classifications, but still using the same raw materials, using the same name nodes. And something that I'm interested in is us pulling in together data sets that are perhaps partially overlapping. So I mentioned that we get sets of checklists, uh, checklist concept sets that may be globally monographically scoped. And we may also get data sets which are, which are more regionally scoped, so they will be partially overlapping. And we can computationally assess whether the, the concepts that sit in those data sets fit together well or whether they completely oppose. So we can computationally push across some of the data, and then we can focus scientific effort on the, on the edge cases. So in summary, this has got, it's got quite a few implications, this, this work, in terms of changing the way that we create and curate data, which will be much more via a workflow, so much more via people proposing the addition of new names to this, to this layer of facts and the curation of names there. So instead of people locally making edits, we'd really like people to be able to say, this name has a mistake, please fix it. And if we fix it in that central layer, it can be available for everyone else to use. And similarly, when you, when you create a new name, don't create it locally, but create it in this, in this central layer and we can make it then available for everyone to use. To do that meaningfully, we need to be able to cite data at a much, much more granular level so that we can make that layer of facts available for other people to build sets of concepts upon. Um, so it's got quite a few applications in terms of us being able to integrate data together and analyze the data we have at the moment to understand where and why there are conflicts in taxonomic opinion. So it's really not just an IT project. It's going gonna, it's gonna to open up some really interesting research as to why that happens. That's Thank me. you. Thank you. So, so thanks a lot to Charles Darwin, as usual. Does anybody have a quick one? Quick question for Nikki, Adrian. Do, do you see this as a as a, as a middle layer for a lot of digitization efforts that we're going to create lots of strings to then process them through this kind of pipeline into things yep. in the ultimate? So this is a pipeline. So this is very applicable for all of our I 
Yeah, you could you could Okay, so that I'm just there. I'm just going to do the question for the online audience because they're kind of for them they're kind of left out of it. Is Adrian was asking whether this you could see this as a workflow for the kinds of work that we're doing as well in the museum is is art does do do you guys at Q see this as happening for collections as well? Yes, I'd agree with that entirely. We could you could apply that three layer model to any kind of domain really. I mean, I've tried to do the same kind of thing with agents. So attempts at transcribing an author a set of authors that you recognize, and then the relationships between authors, so X cited Y, that kind of thing. We're, we're exploring these ideas in the iCollection project, where effectively sort of mapping between streams and validated records, including the ones that are still in the exact same way. Yeah. 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 Yeah.